Hey guys, welcome back to the shop. Today I'm going to be making a knife out of 3 16 of an inch stock. Now, normally I use an eighth of an inch stock, so this is a little thicker than I'm used to working with. It's my last piece of 3 16 and I wanted to make sure to be able to make it into a knife. So I'm going to have a very short everyday carry three finger knife for you here. I'm hoping that it can still be a pretty good slicer. I'm going to intentionally make the blade fairly wide, about an inch and a quarter wide, and I'm going to do a full flat grind to give myself the best possibility of making this thing a good cutter. One thing I want to mention is that towards the end of the video, I end up scratching the finish on this blade while I am making the sheath. Now this was 100% my fault. Uh, I normally take my time a little better when making a sheath and I did not take my time this time and I messed up. So I will point out to you exactly what I did wrong towards the end of this video. So with that, I'll go on with my normal narration and I hope you all enjoy the build. Alrighty, so up to this point we have drawn out the blade, cut it out roughly on the bandsaw, and then brought it over to this 2x72 belt sander with a worn 60 grit BSM ceramic belt to get the blade profiled. After I hit it with the flat platen, I'll move on to my small wheel attachment so that I can get into this finger choil here. This small wheel attachment has uh, really come in handy for these small knives. That one's from Origin Blade Works. So we'll go ahead and mark out the center of the tang here so that I can drill my holes. We're going to go ahead and center punch them and then we will drill these holes out to a number 13 bit. This number 13 bit will accept our Corby fasteners. I then drilled out some weight reduction holes here uh, and also, uh, I don't know if there's any science to this, but uh, epoxy pin holes so that the epoxy can pass through these holes into both scales. I should have done this first while the stock was still square, but I was very slow and careful here. I went ahead and used a 3 16 of an inch end mill to mill out my sharpening choil. So we're going to go ahead and heat treat this knife while it has not been ground. So uh, I used to grind my bevels in, then heat treat the knife. I found that without heat treating, without grinding the bevels before heat treating the knife, I reduced the chances of warping greatly. And this is one of those tips that I got from the guys over there at Bladeforms, and I have put it into practice, and I really like this method better. So as you can hear, this blade is nice and hard. I did not pick up a warp during the heat treat, but even if I did, I would not try to correct it until the second tempering cycle um, so that I do not risk damaging the blade. Just for precautions, I go ahead and clamp this blade to a flat piece of stock during the second tempering cycle at 213 degrees Celsius. So this is what it looks like out of the tempering oven. It's nice and straight and it is ready to be cleaned up. So I'll go ahead and get the profile cleaned up with a 220 grit belt now uh, to save me some time later to get those scratches out. And then I'm going to use my new surface grinding attachment to clean up the flats. I actually built a or forged a hook for my surface grinder that you'll see soon. I will go ahead and actually put out a video of me forging that hook since it's the first time uh, that I've done a forging project like that and I really enjoyed doing it. So this is the hook that I'm talking about. Uh, very simple, but it gets the job done. I got these uh, three and a half, no, three inch belts by 79 inches from uh, Combat Abrasives. It's a 100 grit uh, ceramic shredder. And it does a pretty darn good job here of getting this blade cleaned up. So I get the blade on the surface grinding attachment and then I start making light passes back and forth. Slowly moving the blade towards the wheel until it starts making sparks and then making numerous passes at each set point to make sure that I am not uh, putting waves or anything like that into the blade. I then moved on to a 320 grit surface conditioning belt uh, to kind of give me a nice finish there on the flats. When I get one side done, I'll take some scotch tape, lay it down over the blade so that my chuck does not scratch the blade on that side, and then take the other side up to that 
uh, gator belt 320. After everything's nice and smooth, I'll go and mark the center line of my edge with a 3 16 of an inch drill bit and then start grinding. So the first step is to take a very aggressive angle around a 45 degree angle on the belt using an old belt. Uh, it's not worth using a new belt in this scenario because you'll just tear up the abrasives. So using an old uh, VSM belt, I went ahead and knocked off that corner. After which I will start working down towards the spine of my knife. So that's about as far as I'll take it with a 60. I'll then move on to a 120 grit uh, J-Flex and then after that a 220 grit J-Flex belt to finish off my flats. You can see from this angle that I am getting deep into that plunge line and rounding over the belt on my platen and it actually turned out pretty good. I got some pretty symmetrical plunge lines in this knife. Lastly, after the 220 grit J-Flex belt, I'll move on to a surface conditioning belt. I'm pretty sure this one's considered fine uh, from Scotch-Brite. I'll go ahead and hit the blade with some WD-40, then this belt, and that is the finish that you will see. So this is how far I take my blades before doing a stone wash finish. I think that they would actually be pretty good uh, to start hand sanding at that finish as well. Just for fun, I went ahead and used my micrometer to check some widths. Uh, this is not a perfect indication of flatness, but it kind of gives me an idea of how well my surface grinder is doing. So I marked off three different spots here uh, that I can measure, and then I'll take the total variance between these three measurements to kind of see what my total variance is across this piece, and it's around eight ten thousandths of an inch. So I feel like that's pretty good. Uh, it looks like it was a little lower towards the bottom of the tang, but for what I'm doing as a full tang knife maker, that is perfectly fine. Uh, amount of variance there. So we're going to turn on the etching machine here, and this little DIY etching machine, and I'm going to make a very deep etch at DC power. After which I will clean off my stencil with WD-40 and then go ahead and hit the flats of the knife with the Scotch-Brite Scotch belt. Uh, actually no, I cleaned the stencil with Windex by the way. Uh, I'm trying something new here when I'm etching. I went ahead and took some steel wool and alcohol and clean the blade before putting in the acid. And then two and a half minutes in, took the blade out, hit it with some Windex, and then used a piece of uh, uh, steel wool to clean the blade off. After which I put it back in the acid up until a total etch time of around nine minutes. And then I took the steel wool and cleaned it off again. After cleaning it with the steel wool, I went ahead and hit it with some baking soda to neutralize the acid and then put it in my steel tumbling machine. Or I guess my wood stone washing machine. I'm gonna take this moment right now to ask you to see it in your heart to please hit that subscribe button and do me a solid. Thank you. So this is the finish I was able to achieve with that tumbler and the etching cycle. I think that uh, cleaning the blade like I did before and during etching made a big difference on this knife and I got that idea from Dave Evader Knives, uh, so go ahead and check his YouTube channel out. So after I get the blade nice and stonewashed, I'll go ahead and tape up the blade to protect it while I'm working on the handles. I'm gonna be using two pieces of orange and black uh, G10. The first step is to take them over to my surface plate and flatten these scales. Now, I got some questions about this granite plate that I have. I got that plate from a a countertop shop they have a lot of sink cutouts that they'll give you for free so if you're looking for something pretty flat go ahead and go to your counter shop countertop store and get yourself some sink cutouts uh, so after I get the uh, handle scales nice and flat I came over to the Bauer bandsaw got them rough cut and then to the belt sander to get them rough profiled uh, you can see that I also have holes drilled in them those are number 13 holes for the Corby's and then I'm gonna get a 45 degree angle at the front of the scales uh, to make it so that it's not a sharp drop off at the front there. Uh, before glue up, like you know, you want to go ahead and finish out the front of your scales. I'm taking these up to a thousand grit finish. So once the scales are finished up in the front, we're gonna go over to the milling machine and knock down some uh, counter bores here for the Corby fasteners. 
that counter bore bit I got from Pops Knife Supply and I cannot live without it. I'm going to be using some G-Flex epoxy here and stainless steel Corby fasteners. Uh, these Corby fasteners have to be slightly modified in order to be the right length to attach these scales. So make sure you do your math there. We'll get them nice and snug, but not too snug. Let it sit for 24 hours, and then we can go on to shaping our handle scales. First thing I'll do here is go ahead and cut off the heads of the Corby fasteners, and then grind the sides of the knife flat, and then the handle scales down to the metal on the profile of the knife. When I get close, I'll switch to a 220 grit belt so as not to put really deep scratches in the spine of this knife. And then you can see my motion there. I am rocking the knife back and forth in order to get a nice rounded uh, finish so it's nice and smooth and kind of contoured in your hand. And then move on to a one inch scalloped belt with a 320 grit scallop belt to round over my edges before hand sanding and then back to the 220 grit belt to take out all the cross uh, scratches I put in there. And then it's on the hand sanding. I start off with a 320 grit Rhino Wet sandpaper, move up to 600 after that, and then finally to a 1000 grit paper. I really like how G10 comes out. It's fairly easy to work and it has a really nice finish when it's brought up to a decently high paper. One thing to mention is that the G10 seems to be softer to the sandpaper than the stainless Corby fasteners, so make sure you're using a flat bar when you're sanding so that you don't get any doming of those pins. So this is where I messed up. Uh, I went ahead and started making the sheath. All these pieces are what I normally would do, but where I really messed up was during the shaping of the sheath itself. I uh, actually didn't grind away enough initially so that my retention was too tight. When I went back to fix this tension and grind a little more, I had already put in the sheath together and I've got some grit inside of the sheath when I adjusted the tension. What I should have done was adjust the tension and then thoroughly wash out the sheath or take the sheath back apart, adjust the tension with my grinding and then put the sheath back together. Both of those options would have been better than what I did which was lacklusterly clean out the sheath after adjusting the tension section and then uh, scratch my blade. So this is the section that I had to come back and grind some more away. Uh, you can see that I was pretty high there and if you were to put the knife in you would not be able to get it out. This was the initial look at the inside of the sheath uh, when you take the two pieces apart and that is why I generally make sure to have them very clean before putting the whole sheath together. So I cleaned them I put the sheath together and then I went ahead and made my mistake and adjusted that tension section right there. I ground it down a little more. You can see that I ground it a little deeper. My tension is right. However, I left some grit in the sheath. So you can see in the right angle, horizontal scratches on my blade, destroying the finish of this knife and really taking me off that day. Not a fun moment when you realize that you rushed needlessly and ruined your finished product. So this is now going to be my knife for around the shop. Uh, you can see with the uni clip or ulti clip that there's lots of options here in the pocket or in the waistband. So after we get the sheath made, I'm going to come over here to the Win Waterstone sharpener. Uh, a lot of questions about this sharpener. It's been working out great for me. Uh, you can get a very quick edge on a knife up to around a 220 grit finish so it's it's pretty rough uh, but it will shave hair and cut paper very well so i'll take it up to a 220 grit finish on the stone i'll go back and forth one pass each side and then i will hit it with the strop wheel which is a leather wheel that i have loaded with compound to knock that uh, burr off and after that this thing's pretty sharp it's a good working edge finish uh, for around the shop or a hunting knife or anything along those lines now, if you want to take this a step further, uh, you can probably get some diamond stones or, or even just a higher grit stone to finish off this edge. But this is how it turned out. I hope you guys got something out of this build. If you did, go ahead and hit that subscribe and like button, and I'll catch y'all on the flip side. <laughs>